Hi, my name's Nicholas. Welcome back to my garden. I wanted to invite you along for some fruit tree pruning today. So when we moved in here just over a year ago, the fruit trees hadn't been pruned, I think in at least a couple of years. So they were really overgrown with upright growth. And although it wasn't really the time of year f to prune them, it was May, so it wasn't qu quite like a spring prune or a summer prune. I ended up going for it just because they were so overgrown that I thought that they would benefit from it over not being pruned again till the summer. And as a result of that, we ended up losing most of the fruit on these three. So we have two pear trees here and then an apple tree. We did get to try one of the apples and I think we grew like one pear, but it never really, nothing really came of it. Um, so the reason for pruning this time of year, so July is um, that it's a time of year that when you prune, it's not going to be replaced. Like what you cut off won't be replaced with super vigorous gr growth like it would be in the spring. So that's what happened when I pruned then. I pruned and then basically we got like a lot of upright growth. <laughs> and, um, and then I had to prune again in the summer anyway. So what I thought I would do this year is switch to do most of the heavy, heavy pruning in the summer when there shouldn't be too much vigorous regrowth and then save kind of lighter pruning for the winter. So there's three main things that I'll be pruning today. The upright growth, which you can see it's all the things that go straight up. That's not going to bear any fruit and it's going to shade out the fruit and kind of inhibit it from developing properly. So I wanted to give a kind of close up example of the upright growth I was talking about. And before I do that, I just wanted to show you where the fruit is actually growing. So it's not growing on like the upright part, it's growing down here on these kind of little side shoots. Um, you know, I hear the word spur, so I'm not, <laughs> I don't want to use it wrong, but I'm guessing that this is what that is. Um, so I want to create situations like that. So if we take this branch right over here, this doesn't have any fruit on it. And you can see this part from here to the top is all the new growth. So if I cut that down to about three buds and I can do, you know, a fourth one so that it grows out this way instead of in towards the others. So if I cut that there, then hopefully that will create a situation a little bit like that. Whereas there might be like a new shoot that comes up there that's like the upright growth but then maybe one or two of these will put off some side shoots that will have fruit on them next year. So upright growth will be the main one. Um, the second one will be anything that's like dead or diseased. If there's two branches that are crossed and they're kind of rubbing together or like a really old branch that maybe has some life, live growth at the end, but is dead all the way back and like not really doing anything, stuff like that I'll cut off. And the third one is anything that's like in the way. So if there's something that's kind of come too low down um, or <laughs> something that's blocking maybe the path for the cars or something like that, I will um, cut that off as well. So those are the three main things. And then as far as just being careful not to spread any diseases or anything like that, if I see anything sick, then I'll maybe treat it a little bit differently. Most of the things I'll cut, we'll either use for kindling or I'll dry them out and we can use them to stake our perennials. Um, basically that. Anything that looks like it might be a little bit sick, then I'll chill out or go inside. <laughs> so um, anything that looks like it might be... a <coughs> Anything that looks like it might be a little diseased or something, I will burn instead of using in the garden so as not to spread it. And um, I'll wash my pruners after just to make sure that I'm not spreading it. And generally, I wash them in between each tree so that, you know, if there is something that I don't notice, I don't accidentally spread it. So something I was wondering about is why you would choose to prune or not to prune your fruit trees. Um, and I guess part of it comes down to intention of like why you have the fruit tree there. Our native crab apple, uh, I believe it's Malus fuchsia, is, um, you know, it grows to like 30 feet. It's a big, beautiful tree, nice spring blossoms, good fruit. Um, so if I was growing one of those for the wildlife primarily, then I would kind of just let it do in its own thing. For these fruit trees, we grow them so that we can grow fruit for ourselves. So we kind of want the fruit where it's accessible and we want to prune in a way to maximize the fruit 
uh, yield. So that might be, you know, even pruning off individual fruits. If there's, you know, three or four in a cluster, maybe I'll take one or two off so that the two remaining ones can get as big and beautiful and delicious as possible. So for these ones, we want to keep them kind of low. We want the food, <laughs> the fruit, where we can reach it. And um, we want enough light to be able to get down to them. But if you're growing it just for the wildlife, then you know you can kind of just let it do its own thing and the tree should be perfectly happy as well. Even there, you might manage it a little bit. You know, if something is dead or diseased or something breaks off in a snowstorm and it's not a clean break, you might clean it up a little bit. And for the record too, <laughs> these ones, although they are primarily for us, we don't really do anything preventative to stop animals from eating them. Kind of same with the cherry trees, like maybe the robins get six or seven out of ten cherries and we get the other three, but between two big trees, that's plenty of cherries for us, so it's okay. Um, last year we had a little bit of deer pressure where the deer kept coming in and there were a couple apple trees where they ate like literally hundreds of apples <laughs> and then the bear as well. So this year we have a fence uh, which should stop the deer. We'll see for the bear, like we have seen the bear climb the fence so there's a good chance that they'll come in once the apples start to ripen. But maybe it's enough of a prevention where <laughs> um, if there's, you know, Maybe somebody in the neighborhood doesn't have a fence and has apple trees. Maybe the bear prefers to go there. So we'll see what happens. As far as tools for today, I have a six foot ladder that I'll probably be using for m all the trees and then a three foot ladder. I'll also, I have a step stool that sometimes I use and then there's also a 13 foot orchard ladder, which I think I'm gonna need for the pear tree in the back because that's the tallest. Um, and then other tools, I have a few different kinds of pruners, so just like regular ones and then bigger two-handed ones. These ones are extendable as well if something's just a little out of reach. Th these are the ones that I use the most though because I find having a hand free either to hold on or um, to pull like a branch down so I can cut it or something like that. I have a couple different kinds of saws, a bigger one and a smaller one. I don't think there's anything uh, really big that needs cutting, but again, if I find anything that's like a little diseased or something, then maybe I'll cut a whole limb off. And then just a bucket with a very diluted bleach solution that I can dip my tools in whenever I need to. So I just wrapped up the first tree. I may do a second pass after. Sometimes I'll go through and just like fluff it a little bit <laughs> and just let any of the branches that I missed, that I did cut off but missed throwing off, um, it'll just give them a chance to fall down. Also within a couple days, any branches that I've cut that are still up there will go brown so they'll be really easy to spot. But one thing that I did want to mention was kind of the ergonomics of using the pruners and pruning your fruit trees, <laughs> especially if you have multiple ones. When, I m when we moved in last year and I was pruning all of them kind of manically <laughs> trying to get through them all, I ended up injuring my forearm a little bit. So this year I'm a little bit more prepared. Um, I talked to my physical therapist about it <laughs> and what we discovered was that in my eagerness to prune, I was kind of disconnecting my shoulder and reaching kind of in a way that meant that I was only using my forearm muscles to do the pruners and the repetitive motion of doing this over time ended up straining some muscles. Luckily it was just muscular, but that kind of thing in time can become almost like tennis elbow or something like that. So just something to keep in mind, keeping the shoulder blades down and back, the chest nice and proud. The tendency might be to start to hunch over, so if you notice that, just like open it back up. And then take breaks if your body's letting you know that it's time <laughs> or that, you know, things are starting to be a little sore. There's a few different stretches you can do. Just move your arms in different ways, um, you know, stretch up here or anything else. <laughs> Maybe arms behind the back. Just see what feels good after what you've been doing. So take as many breaks as you need. 
and also you might stagger your pruning over like a whole month generally like summertime july is the time for pruning so for us we have 11 fruit trees so maybe i'll do you know a couple this week a couple next week and kind of spread it out a little bit so i'm not just doing the same thing over and over for a week or 10 days Sweet. So I think I'm going to call it a day here. Uh, it's starting to get pretty hot. <laughs> so I'll leave that last tree. And these ones I'll continue to keep an eye on. <laughs> so as I'm pruning some of the other trees, if I notice a spot that I would like to prune maybe a little more, there were a few places that were a little questionable uh, whether I wanted to cut off the bottom. So if I decide later on, I can always come back and cut them. And then one other thing that I consider as I'm going through or just want to be aware of is although the summer is like a good time to prune for the trees, it's not always a great time to prune for the birds. So if you do come across a nest, I try to just like leave it alone. There was one in um, this pear tree here that looked pretty old. There was nothing in it. Um, I just like left it. I didn't really prune anything around it. And I can always prune that in winter or early spring. But yes, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for coming along for today. And um, we'll see. There's lots more to do, so I may end up showing you some more. Have a good one.